my name's Ted Collins and uh, I've got very fond memories of the uh, chapel. Do you know the first time I went to uh, camp meeting as it was known then was in the 1950s and I went with my grandparents. Uh, Arthur Rose was um, a deacon and uh, Beatrice uh, Rose was uh, the or one of the organists and uh, I remember going there and uh, helping my grandfather pump the manual pump on the uh, organ to uh, get it going for the uh, hymn singing which was great. Used to eat barley sugars in the um, sermon though but um, also uh, then there was deacons and um, I remember going in the back gate you know up the where the patio is and uh, the deacon stood there waiting uh, to welcome people to church and there was there with their black suits some with pinstripes they definitely had waistcoats on with a pocket watch in etc and some of them had uh, moustaches uh, rather forbidden you could say for a five or six year old but um, when you talk to them so friendly Anyway, um, I thought I'd um, share a few things about the church of the past which are so encouraging for the future. Do you know there's been 22 ministers, ordained ministers, um, in the church uh, up until 2008? And the first of those was um, Joseph Tremlow. Um, he joined the church in 1702. And in 1718... He founded a school for poor children. He purchased some buildings in Water Street in Dursley and provided a school which lasted 150 years, uh, providing uh, education around the Dursley area for poor children. And um, even today, after that's closed, you still got the Tremlow Trust, which is a very, very small charity that supplies grants to students for education. Another minister was Andrew Gazard, who joined the church in 1842. And he had the vision to build a chapel out of Woodfields because there was quite a lot of members out of that area, the quarry, and they thought they'd uh, plant a church out there. He bought the land for £14 and uh, had the chapel built at the vast, vast sum of £130. And that chapel opened in 1852 and has served the community up there for years after that. And uh, in the 1970s, they decided uh, the membership there to uh, join the URC church. Uh, and it's still sort of open today. So that's another leading of the spirit of uh, outreach to the local communities. The detached red brick uh, house next to the church car park is what the, we used to call the new man's. And uh, that was... The land for that was bought from R.A. Listers in 1921 for £42. And uh, then they proceeded and built the manse, which was completed in 1923. Uh, there's probably been about eight uh, ministers that lived in, in the manse over the years until in the early 1990s, we uh, sold the manse to start the renovations of, of the church buildings which were in uh, desperate need of uh, upgrading and that was the start of uh, a new era. So myself and my wife Carol joined the church membership in the 1980s and we had the privilege of um, meeting and knowing some of those dear uh, members of the church that have been serving in the church for years in the past. Um, Charlie, for instance, uh, li lived just up Spring Hill with his wife and um, used to get up at three o'clock every Sunday morning uh, to start with to actually light the fire for the boiler. There's a big um, boiler at the back um, which used to supply uh, hot water to the pipes that went around the church at that time. And even when that was upgraded to uh, under pew heating, for all things, 
uh, he still used to get up at three o'clock in the morning to turn the electric heating on. And what dedication, what a privilege to know these, these dear people. The congregation in the church, way back as far as I can remember into the 1950s, has always had a freshness of Jesus in their spirit always had expectancy of the Holy Spirit, leading them into things which are relevant for today, to, to share that in the community. Yes, good old days from the past, but there's fantastic days to come. It's like the DNA of the church is always moving forward, always being relevant. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about some of the history, there's just a snapshot a page on Wikipedia that you can dab in come Congregational Church and there's a bit more information about the 22 ministers. Have faith for the future. God bless and take care.